So I recently got my AWS certification in 2020, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about what that process was like. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube talking about taking the test, but I haven't seen anything really recent on what the logistics are like with COVID and everything in 2020. And so I just wanted to talk about my experience taking the test and what it was like studying for it. And uh, just hopefully it's helpful for anyone who's thinking about taking the test. A little bit about me. I'm a backend Java Kotlin developer. I have about five years of experience with AWS. Most of the time at work, I'm deploying services to Kubernetes. We have some clusters that run on AWS, but we do use Kinesis, SQS, Lambda, S3, Dynamo. Why I chose to get certified, it was a Q3 goal of mine. It had been on my radar for a while. It was something I wanted to do eventually, I knew. And then COVID happened and I had nothing but time. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to validate my skills, get exposure to some new AWS services that I hadn't previously used. And also I thought, you know, it's gonna be a piece of cake. I'm already really familiar with AWS. And alas, AWS has a lot of services. They have 283 services or tools as of January, 2020. And my area of uh, familiarity was really just a small subset of those. So as it turned out, I did have to do a lot of studying. Uh, I spent about 70 hours studying. I took the official AWS training course, which is about three hours. You can access that via the, the certification portal. My favorite courses were on Udemy. I took the A-Cloud Guru course, which is about 16 hours. It's a good kind of overview of AWS. And then I took a course by a guy named Stefan Merrick. My last name is Merrick, no relation. He's a good guy. I really recommend taking his course. It's very in-depth, but it's also very approachable. Stefan Merrick also offers some practice tests and I recommend getting those off of um, Udemy. The secret with Udemy is that, um, you know, they price their courses at like a hundred bucks each, but you're making a mistake if you pay more than $10 ever for them because they're they're just always on sale. If the course at the time that you go in to buy it is, is listed at like a hundred bucks, look around for a discount code or give it like a week. I guarantee that the price will be much lower. That's just their business model. There's some practice tests that AWS has. Uh, I don't recommend paying for the practice test. Um, there's some free ones that you can find that are in PDF form if you just Google for AWS practice test PDF, it should show up. And then reading the FAQs for the services was really helpful. Questions on the test are scenario based and the FAQs are phrased in a way that is addressing a certain scenario. And so that can help you prepare. I made about 600 flashcards just to memorize the different quotas and limits of each service. There's just no replacement for hands-on experience. And so I went through a lot of tutorials with different AWS services. You know, I went through a tutorial on how to encrypt objects in an S3 bucket, for example. So just different scenarios that you come across in the practice tests are good to deep dive in, get your hands dirty, and do some, some hands-on experience. There's really no replacement for that. No better way to learn. The test itself costs $150. You do have to repay that if you fail it. It's 65 questions. It's multiple choice. And like I said, it's mostly scenario-based. You need 72% minimum to pass. With the 70 hours that I put in for studying, I was able to get about 98%, meaning that I just got one question wrong. They give you uh, two hours and 20 minutes to take the test. I finished it in about 40 minutes. The logistics with COVID during this time, it's a little bit weird. Uh, the test is proctored. You have to sign in, you have to put your phone away. I ended up signing in about half an hour before the test and I didn't know if it was okay for me to use my phone. They have a secure browser that they pop up and so you can't really do anything else on your computer. So you're kind of sitting there just staring at the screen until the proctor shows up and you don't want to use your phone because they, they, that's against the rules and so you're just sort of, you know, have some time to reflect, I guess. Uh, so they make you take photos of your workspace uh, behind to the left and the right and, and they, make you verify your identity. You're on webcam the whole time. It's not really that you kind of tune it out after a while. There's a small window that shows your face and it, it says recording, but it's after a while you just kind of tune it out. They don't really talk to you just at the beginning to help you get all set up. These are a few axioms that I found helpful while taking the test. 
always keep in mind the principle of least privilege, meaning that you should never assign more privileges than are necessary to accomplish a task. For example, let's say you had a question about a user who was wanting access to a specific S3 bucket, and the, the possible options were to give that user full access to S3 or to give them just access to the S3 bucket, you would wanna give them the narrowest scope of access in order to accomplish that task. And so the answer to that one would be, just give them access to the S3 bucket that they need access to. Number two is to prefer roles over credentials. There's frequently questions on the test around whether you should embed credentials or assign a role. You never wanna embed credentials. That's a security risk. There are a couple minor edge cases where roles can't be used, but in general, you always wanna prefer roles over credentials. Also, clients should use exponential backoff. So sometimes you'll come across a question about an API gateway that's returning 429s, which means that it's overloaded. And in that case, the solution would be to have the clients use exponential backoff to reduce load on that endpoint in order to get it back in a good state. So whenever you run into a question about the approach that you should take to solve a question of heavy load on a service, you generally wanna to lean towards having the clients use exponential backoff. Some tools that I found useful, one of these is the policy simulator. Uh, I'll link to all of this in the description of this video, but it's a useful tool web-based for testing and troubleshooting. I am permissions. You can confirm access to a resource you're wanting access to. Another one is the policy generator. You can fill in a few fields and it'll generate a full IAM policy for whatever, um, whatever policy you're trying to generate for your service or your user. I'm definitely glad I got certified. It really gave me a sense of validation and confidence in my skill set. It also exposed me to services that I hadn't even heard of before. And so it was good to have that familiarity. And it's already been really useful to me in my current role. I definitely recommend getting certified if you're on the fence about it. It gave me a sense of validation and increased confidence in my skill set. It also gave me some familiarity to services that I hadn't previously even been aware of, and I've already found it useful in solving problems in my current role. I've already come across scenarios that encroach on knowledge that I didn't have before, and I've taken a different approach than I would have before, now, I, now having that foundational knowledge. So I definitely recommend it. Here's a few resources that I found helpful. I will also provide links to these in the description of the video. Best of luck to you if you're studying. I have full confidence in you, stranger on the internet, to do well on this test. But seriously, reach out if, if I can help answer any questions or, or help steer the way for you to do well on this test. And I, I'm pushing for you. Uh, so best of luck and thank you for watching.